Morning, Wyoming community. Superintendent Rich Schneider, accompanied by middle school, high school uh, administrative assistant Crystal Eniga. Uh, we are going to give you an update on the numbers. As we said last week, too, the numbers appear to be dramatically improving. As you can see, looking down this list, all of them have shown great improvement. Yellow Medicine is just over that 50 goal, which we know we're not using these to make our um, all of our decisions. We're kind of using it to help us monitor the community. So that does put all of us, the recommended would be in distance. As you can see here, we're as a state improving dramatically in terms of the number of counties in each of these ranges. We're shifting back to the left. Um, that is a good sign that maybe we're slowing it down. Maybe the vaccine and the increased testing, which increased testing results in us changing our behaviors, hopefully. Um, so that is maybe having a good impact on us. We can slow it down. Um, daily situation, here's what we had yesterday. And we've had a number of days where it's been this good. Yellow Medicine County yesterday, one positive case. Uh, Chippewa, none. Renville, five. Uh, total deaths in the past week since I last collected it. Chippewa grew by one and Renville by one. Over the past week, so um, from last Thursday to yesterday, Yellow Medicine County saw 19 new cases, Chippewa 22 and Renville 21. So very good information there. Very positive for us. Active case data tested. These are people that have tested positive in the last 14 days. So as of yesterday, I don't know why I have uh, um, 14 listed for the first part because I did not change it. Um, that was, should actually be the 13th, but Yellow Medicine County, 31. So it went down from the week before by eight. Chippewa, 18, went down by 18. Lacaparro County went down um, by 10 from the previous week. Renville County went up by six. And in looking this morning too, they went up again today. So hopefully that's not a sign of the trends we'll see, um, but we'll continue to watch that. Um, so staff and student, again, very positive news. Uh, total staff COVID related absences for the school year did not grow in the past week, no change. Um, total staff positive, no change. Um, the total student COVID related absences did go up by five. Um, four at the elementary, one at the middle school, high school. And then we did go up by, in the past week, we've gone up by one positive case in our school district amongst our students. So that's roughly 6.9% of our entire student body. Current active cases, we have two in the middle school, high school, which is roughly a half of 1%. Um, Elective distance learning, I did update that. I hadn't updated that for a while. I'm suspecting that's gonna change here in the next week with the start of the new quarter next week. Um, out of our total enrollment, which includes all of our students coming in, roughly 0.6% of them are currently active and zero for BRE. Uh, we suspect with BRE, they have gotten notice, they're, down to 18, and that's what I reported last week. At least two more will drop, so they'll come down to 16. Um, this is the case count by zip code. Granite Falls grew by nine in the past week. Can be five, Clarkfield one. No change at either Hanley or Echo. Part Porter went up by three, Wood Lake by one. Montevideo up by 11, much larger population in Montevideo too. So, so here's what it looks like um, this week, as I reported in that first slide, um, Yellow Medicine County 50.67, Chippewa 44.13, really impressive for Chippewa because they were a lot higher. They were well into the 200s and they have now dropped down to 44.13. Um, expected for next week, a little bit more accurate. I suspect we're gonna plateau about that 50 
we're going to toggle just barely below to a barely above 50. Um, Chippewa appears to go down. Um, we are suspecting there's some mistakes in those numbers. And uh, right at the 14 day extent of that, we'll see that um, change. So um, I do suspect it's going to go up a little bit, but we'll be right in that 50 range. So, and then of course, the last one, not very accurate. And this becomes less accurate, especially as we're improving our numbers. Some other information, Tim Knapper talked about uh, activities. We don't have any positive cases in our activities right now. They've started, we're at the 150 person capacity for home events, but uh, for most times it's going to be two tickets per participant. Unfortunately, the 150, we can't just throw that number out there. We also have to maintain spacing. We are lucky at Yellow Medicine East, we do have a big gym and we have enough space that we will get to that or really close to that 150. Some of the small gyms that we visit, unfortunately, we won't get many tickets because they will be at their capacity, not because they have 150 um, visitors in there, but because they have small gyms and they can't keep the spacing between families. We started our first iteration of saliva testing for school employees. We had 24 people. Um, it's important to note that we have had 29 positive cases this year, and most of those are ineligible to test anyway. So 24, not great, but we're making that available. And hopefully that keeps a pulse on what's happening in our school. Vaccinations update, we will be sending out, hopefully today, we're working on it right now, Cassie will send out a survey to staff to find out who would be willing to take it because we heard from the governor yesterday, um, actually from the commissioner, Jan Malcolm, the MDH commissioner, that they have expanded those eligible to include 1B, which does include anyone 65 and older and those with the underlying health conditions younger than that and most important to us as the school, school employees. So right now though, the limiting factor is the number of doses. So just because they opened up that next group doesn't mean that the doses are available. Um, we are getting some trickle down because some people are not taking it. Um, so um, we could see that coming to our staff here in the next week or two. Um, at the earliest. Um, I'd be surprised if we got any real dates or possibility of vaccinations before the 1st of February. And, and I, I still feel that way. I felt that way for a couple of weeks, just based upon all the different conversations we're having. Last week, I talked about the procedure for changing learning models. So I did consult with the Department of Health and a proposal to change our high school from an AB hybrid to in-person four days a week and one day of virtual is not a model change. So we do not have to get their approval. They did urge us to make sure we are following those protocols. Um, and we'll talk about that on the last slide here. Um, the other news that you're hearing about is a new variant for COVID has been found in Minnesota. I believe um, two days ago, they told us there were five positive cases for that variant. But at this time, there is no indication it is more deadly, but it is much more transmissive. So it'll spread faster, but generally speaking, it at this point has the same characteristics. Now, if you study anything about viruses, you know that's how they work. Um, they're constantly evolving. Um, it's kind of like survival of the fittest. Um, so they evolve and can expand, expand or take advantage of certain hosts based upon that changing or adaptability. So that's the news related to the COVID. So last night at our incident command team, we um, took recommendations and it was recommended that our high school students would return to four days a week of in-person with Fridays being hybrid or virtual. Um, 
and that is still a hybrid model. And that would occur on January 25th. We still have one more incident command team meeting to analyze the data, but right now we're gonna roll out that our intent is all high school students would return to classes on January 25th. If you are intending to make any schedule changes or have any other ideas, if you want to go to remain A, B in your schedule, um, or if you want to go distance learning, or if you want to return from distance learning, this coming week is the week to let us know so we aren't sprung on it on the 25th, and then we can't meet proper health protocols and we contribute to any health problems that might be in our community or amongst our students, families, or staff members. So please let us know next week at the latest what your plans are um, so that we can calculate for that. We do have a capacity for our rooms and uh, we wanna honor that and make sure everyone is safe. Um, all people safe, not just a few or not just a certain segment. All people are safe. All right, Crystal, do you have anything to add? I do, I just have a couple notes I wanna go over um, that with the return of students to the building, just keep in mind again, we are Minnesota in the winter. Uh, please dress for the weather because we will be utilizing outdoor learning spaces um, as well. For grades nine through 12, your lunch will remain the same as it was in the past. Nine would stay on campus, 10 through 12 have the option for open lunch. Um, when you are dropping your child off in the morning, um, please remember to utilize the assigned doors. Um, grades six through eight, I believe, come in through the district office door, which would be the east wing. Um, and I believe grades, oh, but goodness, 10 and 11 are door 18 down by the gym, and 9 and 12 are door 16 by Mr. Petrick's room. That is the normal door where most of the students are familiar, where they would typically come in. And then the other thing I just want to reiterate that is super important for both the BRE and the high school level, um, please let us know your intent on returning to the building um, or if you are wanting to do the A and B option because we do have to make those plans. And like Rich had, had mentioned, we want to make sure our staff are comfortable in their classrooms, that they are safe, that our students are safe and that we can abide by those regulations. So. I will be putting a link to a survey on the website here later this morning that you can go and fill out if you have a change of intention for the 25th, um, but please do so and let us know either by that survey uh, form or via email to your building office uh, as soon as possible so we can start making those arrangements. Other than that, I can't tell you how excited I am to get everybody back in the building. And I think last night at the meeting, Rich, didn't you say the last time that we had all of our ninth through 12th graders in the building was March 16th? Correct. Like we should be, we are gonna be celebrating. I cannot wait to see the kids and have everybody under one roof. It's gonna be, it's gonna be an incredible day. Great. Yeah, feeling. it's a step towards a level of normalcy. Now, I am going to warn you um, we need to keep up with things, all right? Yes, so, yep. As a reminder, our model next week will not change, all right? We'll stay with what we are. So our ninth through 12th graders will be on the AB model. All K through eight will be able to come here um, in this coming week. That'll be Wednesday and Thursday. And so Friday yep. will still be in hybrid. Um, and so then the following week, we'll welcome back all those high school kiddos on an everyday basis, Monday through Thursday. Um, so we urge you to continue to make um, healthy decisions. And so in my talking to the Department of Health and talking about this change, they reiterated these things. These are the things that they really emphasized to me. Um, it is important that we wear a mask. We stay six feet from others at every opportunity we have. Avoid gatherings, wash your hands often, and stay home if you feel sick or have been in close contact with someone who has COVID-19. 
we are not out of the, wo the woods, folks, all right? Even after we get the vaccine, we have a battle in front of us. And so these things are should be the new normal and we're gonna have to hang on to them for a little bit and I apologize for that, but um, hang in there, follow these guidance, stay healthy, all right? Thank you, folks. Have a great day. Thank you.